Hi everyone, welcome to another Creditor Watch webinar. Let me just close this quickly. There we go. All right, I'll see you properly. So today's webinar, we're looking at uncovering unique data in Creditor Watch credit reports. So I've got um, Joe Bartuli, who's our CTO, joining us today, talking through a few of the more technical parts of the credit reports, scores, predictors, API, that sort of thing. Joe, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me. Pleasure. All right, let's get into it. So as always, our product suite, I won't spend too much time on this. Of course, if you've got questions, please do ask, we'll get in contact with us afterwards and we can take you through a proper demonstration of, um, of our product suite. So we've got everything from the customer onboarding using Applyeasy, which is our online credit application, all the way through to assessment. So what we're really gonna talk about today is the credit report, score, payment predictor, that sort of thing. But within that as well, you've got you know, important elements like monitoring and alerts, um, and of course, the analysis tools at the end there that that allow you to have a look at your either portfolio as a whole using a portfolio health check or data wash. Data Logic, really great tool to prioritise collections, understand where the credit risk and payment risk exists within your portfolio. And then financial risk assessment we'll talk about as well. At the far end, we're talking about automation and integration. So PPSR Logic, all things PPSR related, um, registrations, creations of registrations, management renewals, etc. Um, and of course, API, which we will touch on as well. <clears throat> Some key highlights to look at before we get into it. Over, 50, over 55,000 customers at the moment, which is fantastic and growing every single day. Um, from sole traders all the way through to some of the biggest companies, financial institutions in Australia now using us. Some important numbers to pull out of here. Um, over 10 million lines of trade, so invoice data, receivables data coming through into our bureau now. 90% of our customers are unique to Creditor Watch, which means the data that they're providing us is really, really unique um, in what we do. So that's really exciting. Jumping into the agenda too, um, the one thing I wanna talk about today is obviously, sorry, let me close something else. The one thing I wanna talk about today is of course, Creditor Watch reports. What are they? What goes into them? Um, and something that's really important to note is that we don't we don't have specific named reports that include or don't include certain elements of our of our data and our and our um, you know our scoring, for example. So we just talk about a credit watch report. Now, depending on what type of um, plan or how you're using credit watch, will also ultimately determine you know how you ingest some of that data as well. And I'll, I'll touch on that as we go through um, a live demonstration. And I'm gonna be jumping from the slides into the um, into Creditor Watch itself so that you can understand exactly what I'm talking about. A little bit more interactive that way as well. Um, unique data, reporting elements, API. Of course, we've got Joe here, the technical guru. Um, and as always, I want you asking questions. So if you do have questions, please use the GoToWebinar control panel to ask some questions. Um, and I've got a slide at the end, so it does remind me, and provided we, we haven't run too far over time, um, we will get into those questions as well. If we can't answer them because they're a little bit too technical or need you know a little bit of a session, then we'll get in touch with you afterwards. So the first thing I wanna ask is, are you a Credit Watch customer? We get plenty of customers join us, and we get plenty of non-customers. So it's really good for Joe and I to understand um, are you a customer or not? It helps us sort of tailor the, the discussion, the presentation. Um, if there's a lot more customers, then we don't have to do some of the basic things because you know you'll be you'll you'll obviously be using the product already and understand it. If it's 50-50, well then we just get on with it. And if it's a lot more um, uh, new to Creditor Watch or, or prospects um, or people just inquiring, then of course that will determine it. So looking at the results as as you guys um, and, and girls. Vote there, it's, um, we're looking at about 80% of our customers, so, so that's great to see. Thank you for um, joining us today and doing that. All right, let's keep going. So, Creditor Watch data sources, the single most important thing to look at today. So we've got a wide variety of data sources, um, and Joe, one of his um, KPIs that is ongoing is actually to find 
more of those and, and we're starting to, to bring additional bits of data in which I will touch on that aren't necessarily here but really the core data sources we've got here ASIC and Australian Business Register um, any creditor watch customer and this could be you and you haven't integrated but if you use Zero or MIOB the cloud MIOB version um, you can integrate your accounting platform with creditor watch and you get a lot more insights out of creditor watch it's, it's free to do um, you start to see invoices within um, the credit watch report. So if you receive an alert, for example, it says so-and-so has gone into ABC proprietorship and it's gone into administration, um, click on the link, takes to the credit report. Oh, I can see that they owe me three invoices, you know, $50,000 outstanding. That's really important. Quick, quick to action is, uh, is, is obviously critical around those, um, those sort of alerts. Larger organisations submit their age trial balance on a monthly basis. So that's their receivables data. Um, we get insolvency notices from the government. We're, we're getting court actions, um, writs, judgments from Australian courts um, around the country. Mercantile inquiries um, coming from our debt collection clients, so they can leave a essentially a debt collector debt collection footprint. Payment defaults from our customers, and then AFSA is the last one there as well. Anything that I may have missed that you can think of? No, that's that's the majority that we can't. Fit. Yeah. Um, on top of that, a few little things. We've got ANSI codes, not across every single entity, but we've got ANSI codes across about a million uh, businesses in there. Um, and we're going to introduce revenue and employee data. Yeah, so hopefully yeah. I haven't spoken out of turn there. Over the next few uh, few weeks, we should be releasing revenue and employee data um, on a similar size business um, set. So we're really excited to see that uh, appear in our credit reports. Yeah, fantastic. So always looking for more data. If there's anything out there, that you can think of that would be good to have that you'd like us to introduce, please just let us know. Um, for those of you that are part of the, um, the Liquor Association as well, we have the ability, to, we will have the ability fairly soon to show you liquor licensing information at a, at a company level as well. Um, so uh, that's only for those that are members of the Liquor Association. So if you're in that industry and you're not a member, go and join. All right, unique data. So what makes Creditor Watch different? You know, what is it that makes our data different? What is it that makes it more predictable um, and, and, and ultimately better to use from a credit risk perspective? Number one thing is we've got over 55,000 companies using us now. So that's a huge, huge sample size. And importantly, it's not just the top end of town. It's not just the banks and the telcos and the largest you know, financial institutions and, and businesses in Australia. It has a really, really good mix of sole traders through small business, medium business, mid-market, corporate, however you want to slice and dice um, the segmentation of, you know, businesses, we've got it covered. And that's across all of Australia, every industry as well. So what that means is you get, we're, we're able to provide a 360 degree view of what a bad debtor looks like, okay? Because we're just getting information from how big business pays small, small pays big, small pays small, medium pays medium, all of that, rather than just how companies are paying larger organisations, which is something um, you know that, that the other bureaus probably only have. Um, the next big thing is we're the only credit bureau to integrate with Zero and MYOB, so really, really critical there. We're able to, to obviously access um, receivables data from Zero and MIB, plus our customers can also get the benefits of that integration piece as well. Really rich information. We're getting that data coming through on about a five minute cycle. Um, so we can essentially in time, not right now, but essentially in time, we'll probably be able to say that, you know, XYZ Proprietary Limited pays their days, you know, 14 days overdue, six hours and, you know, 45 minutes or something like that. Yeah, and with that spread of 55,000 customers, um, where we're looking at a little over a million businesses, active businesses that we're able to um, touch and understand the behavioural aspect to that. And that helps go into our, our risk score um, that we'll talk on um, a little bit further. And I think on top of that as well, you get the network effect, right? So imagine a, you know, a bit of a spider web with all these sort of connected cores, um, you know, XYZ Proprietary Limited is dealing with these 10 companies, right? So we've got data on that XYZ and those 10. And then of those 10, they're also dealing with all these other ones. So you get this really, really great network effect that means that data is coming in from all of these different angles, different sources, 
um, and it just makes it really, really rich in terms of uh, providing you know, credit risk insights. Payment defaults. So payment defaults can be registered by our customers against their debtors, and that is unique to Creditor Watch. It's only on the Creditor Watch Bureau. Business demographic risk, I will leave that for now. Joe is going to talk to that in a little bit when we look more specifically at the risk score. Mercantile inquiries from over 200 debt collectors. And the big one that a lot of people ask me about, but probably haven't asked for a while because it's uh, it's been on the back burner for, for some time with the ATO, but ATO tax defaults are coming soon. Um, I can't give an exact date, but I'm really hopeful it's in the next couple of months. Um, the, the volumes will be, will be small and slow initially, but I think the most important thing is they're actually at a stage where they're ready to start sharing it and we will get to a position where um, you know, consumer advocates become comfortable with it, creditors become comfortable with it, debtors become comfortable with it. I think really importantly, particularly at the moment, we know that the ATO is the largest creditor in Australia, probably the biggest bank. Everyone uses them um, for, for, for ultimately cash flow work and finance by not paying their tax. This will help them speak to companies who need assistance, but also ensure that tax is being paid by those that can pay it. And that is great, particularly when we've got um, one of the biggest deficits, if not the biggest deficit um, in, uh, in Australian history. So some key elements and terms um, that I will talk about today. And from here, I'm gonna jump into a credit report so we can start to have a look at it and you can understand exactly what it is that I'm talking about. So a credit report, as I said, is a fairly, hold all term that, that we use here. We don't have a you know, specific um, report named based on what is included, um, because as you know, most of the time everything's included or you can just bang on an additional element into your package um, at a you know, transactional basis level. So um, depending on what plan or subscription you're on will determine exactly what is included within that credit report. Risk score, so it used to be called credit score, changed it to risk score because we're looking at more risk ratings as most customers and anyone in our database would have seen was introduced. Uh, in October last year. Last year? Yeah, October last year. Um, so there's been plenty of um, uh, webinars and, and content pushed out about that, but we'll get to show you and then Joe's gonna jump into the sort of finer details of, um, of how the data is all put together and, um, and ultimately modeled. Payment predictor, that's utilising the data from Xero, MYOB and the age trial balances. Um, great tool, we sort of combine them into one. So if they're not included in your subscription, you can now buy um, one and you get both. Um, Joe will talk about that in its current state and what the next version of it looks like, which is really exciting coming July to put pressure on Joe. Um, and then adverse data. So when we talk about adverse data, that's probably you know the, 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 the risk data itself that is um, coming from those sources that we looked at, court actions, payment defaults, mercantile inquiries, insolvency notice, those sort of things. And then the last, last important element um, for companies, we obviously have ASIC data and that is looking at directors, office holders, shareholders, addresses. Um, importantly, it allows us to link directors of one company to another and we can start to look at cross directorships. We can look at how they operate as a director. They might have one company that looks really good, but then they've got five or six, or in case I'm gonna show you about, I don't know, 15 uh, cross directorships that, you know, most of which are failing or have failed. So really powerful information there from ASIC. And of course, that data is included in the report. If someone else within Creditor Watch has um, purchased it previously, um, and, and, and if not, we obviously flag where, where, an, where an update is required. So with that in mind, I'm going to jump in and start to have a look at some of these reports. So having a look at a company that recently went into administration, I believe it was just this week, um, it's a really good way to demonstrate um, all the data that we have, except obviously the mercantile inquiry, but you can see everything else is populated. And it's a great way to understand the power of the Creditor Watch data and report and solution. Okay, so if you were to look at this company, you know, a month ago, a year ago, two years ago, you could start to get an understanding of the warning signs that were coming along the way to suggest these guys 
we're heading towards administration. So the top part here, and Joe will talk to the user experience, user interface, probably later on, I'll probably throw a couple of questions at him to get him talking about it. But ultimately, um, we call these widgets for lack of a better term. You can click on any of them and it takes you straight to that section. We want you to be able to look at this company at any report and make a decision almost immediately. You know, you can see here, um, they're an F rating, so you definitely don't want to do business with them. Um, they're in administration. They've got multiple defaults, court actions, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, you probably don't need to go much further, but for the purpose of the, the demonstration, I'm going to go on. So, running through this, not too quick, but I don't want to, I don't want to, um, I don't want to spend an hour doing this, of course, because most of you would have looked at it. So the summary information here, the publicly available ABR or ABN lookup data, ASIC data coming in, telling you, you know, essentially where they where they are located, how long they've been in business, the status of the business as well. And it's probably important to note that that's a live data feed that we have with ABR and ASIC. So that information that is shown right there is at, at that moment 100% up to date. So rather than going to two separate government websites, no offense to the government, but they don't do um, tech very well. Um, it can be very slow. You jump in here and you can get that information immediately and it is live, the same as that you are looking at. Now, before I pass to Joe, we're gonna look at the risk score here. So in this case, it's showing. If it's not showing, you can order it, of course, depending on your, uh, your subscription or your plan. Key things here are obviously the rating itself. Um, the risk level here is in default. I got a 100% chance of default in the next 12 months. I'll show you another one after where you can see the different levels of default. Um, you can then see how they've ultimately fallen off a cliff. That's where they've gone um, into administration in May. Um, but you could see that they were trading as an E level, which is extremely low, extremely risky. I'll show you the, uh, the recommendations here. So you can see how we do it. We map it very similar to for example, an SNP rating scale, um, A1, A2, A3, all the way down to, to F, F being the worst. All right, Joe, over to you. Let me know if you want me to jump back into the slides. Yeah, so look, when it comes to the risk score, one of the things that we identified um, extremely early is the fact that people didn't really understand what a number meant as a score out of zero to 850. We took feed that feedback on, but on top of that as well, uh, we were also quite, um, we knew the fact that if a, someone lodged a payment default with Credit Watch over the next two years, they were twice as likely to go, in, uh, to go into external administration. So with that, when we're speaking with our customers, a lot of the feedback that I'm getting was like, Credit reporting is all about uh, reactive data. It's great that you can see this data after or see the ratings happen after the event occurs, but we've obviously got a lot of um, information there to um, be able to um, assess risk and see what are your risks over the next 12 months. And that's where it becomes extremely powerful. And predictive. And extremely predictive. So um, <laughs> the first thing we did is we, we, we teamed up with some uh, data scientists um, who, came, who came from the credit modeling background. Um, we took our own data engineers and we combined that score together. And we looked back over the 10 years worth of unique credit watch data that we had and going back further with those behavioral um, information that we had with ASIC and ABR and AFSA and starting to look at, can we actually identify some of the, the, the components uh, that go back into um, a company that, and we can identify what's a, a signal that show that this company might uh, might end up in external administration over the next sort of 12 months. So if we want to go back to um, the slides. Um, so we're going to break it down into three distinct categories. There's over 30 per, per um, entity, there's over 30 data points that we actually look at to kind of assess a risk score. And I might just jump in there and, and make it clear just on a point there. What we actually do, we actually have a different risk score model for each entity type. And I don't know if you were going to talk to that. Yep. Sorry if you were, but for a private company, for example, uh, for public, for sole traders, trusts, for partnerships, those that are registered for GST and not. So it's not just a one model fits all approach, but I think what's important is the risk rating itself. You can be really consistent with your decision making, knowing that you know a C1 
in with one entity as a C and a C1 with the other is, is, is a nice way to sort of go, okay, we don't want to go below that, for example, rather yeah. than a number, the number that we had previously, it didn't necessarily correlate as well. Yeah, that's that's correct. So um, there are seven different, uh, six different segments across um, the, the business entity and, and uh, company entity types out there. So we're really uh, proud of the fact that we actually do go into specific segments and find different data points that kind of signal whether that uh, entity might end up in either in a deregistered status if it's for um, a sole trader um, or a external administration or wind up members uh, for, for companies um, as part of ASIC. So as I was mentioning, there's three different segments. You've got your traditional bureau adverse data. Um, so while uh, payment defaults are unique across bureaus, there's some of the commonalities there that we all have, but it's you know, ABR, ASIC, court, um, uh, those bankruptcies and, and other insolvencies. So we're not only taking that reactive data, but then we start combining it with um, uh, what we call behavioral data. Uh, behavioral data. So the demographic data, which includes things like geographic risk clusters. So um, different areas where they kind of show a slightly higher risk than other, um, other particular areas. Um, and that could be because of um, rent um, differences in terms of um, CBD versus outside of the CBD. There's obviously a big disparity between how much rent you're paying. Um, the industry that goes into that, um, how you're registered, whether you're registered with GST or not, um, the maturity of a particular business, and some really um, interesting ones would be the management structure. So we actually look at the management structure of those particular entities um, and use natural language processing to figure out um, industries where we can um, easily identify it with um, other data. Then coming back to our unique data set that we kind of touched on earlier, coming from our 55,000 businesses, we've got um, uh, our age trial balances that some of our uh, larger corporates provide, but then our integrations with Zero um, and NYB. And when we look at those businesses um, and that, that uh, transaction data, we're touching well over a million businesses, active businesses in Australia. So using that unique data to kind of understand, well, are these early warning signs um, going to um, reflect anything in insolvency? So if you start seeing some interesting trends go upwards um, with, with uh, that transaction data, we can start to predict whether um, that business might be, at, uh, might be having some cash flow issues. Um, yeah, and if you want to go on to the next slide, so just to give you a bit of an idea, um, how most business, how most ratings would work is that you have this nice bell curve. So you'll find that the Australian, uh, the average Aussie business um, is around that C2, C1 mark. So if you're sitting in that um, bucket, you're a fairly safe um, business. It's when you start to go into the C3, definitely when you go into the D1 and below, that should be really uh, understanding whether you want to be doing with those businesses or how you transact, whether you switch to a COD model, um, you know, 50 percent up front. Yeah, yeah, there's lots of different models there that can help um, reduce your risk. You definitely don't want to, as a small business, you definitely don't want to be turning away that business, but we can definitely give you the information that you would need to turn that um, risk um, into that uh, into a profitable um, uh, uh, transaction. Yeah, fantastic. So again, this is, as you can see here, this is an example um, of the distribution for a private company. Um, so it's a great way to sort of understand that, all right, C1 and C2. I think the, the first thing that a lot of people said to us, like, oh, see, there's a lot of, you know, C1 and C2 seems like a high risk. It's actually not. One, you consider where we are at the moment in the middle of a pandemic, you know, almost every company out there, particularly if you went back 12 months ago, was, was, was high risk until we started to work out some industries are going to do really well and, and, and others aren't. Um, but overall, if you're sort of looking at B3, C1, C2, you've got over 50% of companies sitting within that, right? You go to the left side of the scale, it's obviously larger organisations, uh, those with a great history and, and, and data profile based on what Joe's talking about, of course, public companies as well. And then C3 onwards, <clears throat> really, particularly C3 onwards, you want to be asking a question, do you want to be doing business with them? And if you do, um, of course, try to understand how you can uh, reduce the risk within your business. All right, so what I'm gonna do, the next one is actually a payment predictor. Now these guys are in administration, so I'm gonna jump over to another company here and show you the payment predictor. Now, as we've got a, a large number of customers who are using us, um, I would assume most of you have seen it. So I will give a really quick recap. 
Joe will talk about the sort of data behind it and also what's coming. So the great thing about the pain predictor, using all that ATB, zero MIB counting data, bringing it all together, we're able to report on a particular company um, and, and in this case, about a, about a million companies out there, how they've been paying their bills um, from, a, uh, from a payment perspective and also from a historical 12 month trend where we can um, identify the industry as well. We've done that too. So this is a really good one to have a look at. You can see that they've, they're quite lumpy, but they've never been too far away from, um, from their gray you know, industry average. However, we can see both of them in the last couple of months have started to see big blowouts where the entity itself is now at 48 days overdue and the industry itself is at 75 days overdue. So um, if, if you were either dealing with them at the moment or you were about to start dealing with them um, from a new, a new account, new customer perspective, it's a really, really important indicator to have a look at how are they tracking. You know, if, if all of a sudden they're blowing out or there's a consistent increase, you really want to ask yourself, do you want to be dealing with them or how can I minimise the risk? How can I um, uh, protect myself if this is uh, if this is only going to get worse? Of course, these guys. Uh, this this is this is an example, but they are in the um, hospitality industry, um, which <clears throat> did sort of perform up and down somewhat as, as lockdowns happened. But we know that there has been additional stress of late on it as well. I'd probably also point out, you know, I don't think it's a um, a, a coincidence at, at all that you know once John Cooper has finalised, we've started to see um, not only in, the, in that industry, across all industries, that payment times have blown out over the last month or two. And we're seeing that across many industries that were heavily reliant on JobKeeper to keep their doors open. Yeah. So, um, probably don't need to talk to the current state of this payment predictor and, and the data that's going into it, but Joe's going to provide a bit of an update for, for what is coming in the near future. Yeah. So, we're really excited. Um, the same way that we produced a rating uh, system for our risk score. We wanted to do the same for our, our payment predictor. The main reason for this is that we had feedback is that uh, even though you've got that, that trend there, people really don't know what to do with that trend. So we're actually going to combine our payment default data along with their trade payment data and provide, put that into a, a, um, another uh, modeling decision where you'll find most of uh, businesses like that risk score in the middle somewhere around that C mark um, will follow a very similar structure, an A to E um, sort of rating. Um, and obviously as you start to uh, see payment trends slip out, we'll start looking at um, some uh, some averages of those uh, dollar amounts of those bills um, and how far they're slipping out to start decreasing that rating. So it's a, another great indicator to say, while, they, while this business might have a um, C1 or a B3 rating, I can actually look at their payment um, rating to understand how likely is it that they might start using me as a bank. Uh, and that's a really important tool, tool for certain businesses that um, uh, might be struggling with cash flow um, and can't afford to, to kind of take on that extra burden. So again, use that information to figure out how how's the best to start dealing with this particular business because as a small medium business you don't really want to say no but you can definitely reduce that risk there and i think what's important of course is you've got to you know, it's going to be different for, for your business versus you know another business that's using credit watch um, depending on what you're selling depending on who you're selling to as well uh, a really good sort of analogy for, for what i was talking about is you could have a public company, I won't name names, we have a public company, so you know, they might be an A1 or an A2, right? The, the chance of them defaulting or falling over in the next 12 months is, is virtually nil. However, they just don't pay, um, they just don't pay suppliers for, for before 90 days, right? So the, right. So, the, so the payment rating will show that they are a very, very, very slow, poor payer, right? 90 days is the average, for example. Um, the good thing is, you know that, okay, well, I know that I'm going to get paid because they're not going to fall over and they're going to be really consistent because they're a large organisation and that's their payment terms. Um, so you could work to that from a cash flow perspective and that, and that could just be managed in-house or it could be that, you, you know, you get some sort of finance to, to plug that, that cash flow gap as well. But that, that's, that's just one of many, many different scenarios that yeah, you have to think of. All right, great. What I will do is jump back into this one and we'll keep going down. So credit inquiries, credit inquiry is a credit watch customer looking at this particular entity 
um, and, and, and having a look at their credit report ultimately. The big thing about Creditor Watch is we encourage this. You know, we're not charging you per report every single time. It's included, you know, the X amount are included in your in your package, or if you're monitoring them, you have the ability to, to look at the credit report as, as part of that as well. And so monitoring, keyword there, if you are monitoring them, you receive an email alert. So what that means is you're not just doing a, a credit report, and this is traditionally how credit reports were, were, were consumed. Um, someone would come to you for an account, you would look at their credit report and go, okay, great, I'm gonna open an account for them. And you, you may not even look at that credit report ever again. If they continue to pay you, no problem, you don't do an annual review. Credit, credit Watch, we're providing those email alerts. Something has changed, great, I can jump in. It's not gonna cost me anything. I can see that a change has occurred. It's a payment default, it's an administration, it's a director change, whatever it is, click on. And that's another credit inquiry. So the credit inquiries with Credit Watch, very different to, to how you potentially would view them historically. Obviously in specific um, industries like finance, they wanna know exactly who's doing it. Are we, are, we, are we giving out too many loans? Are we stacking on top of one another? Um, even in certain industries, even you know whether it's hospitality or you know retail goods, you want to know who you're dealing with. But it's it's a different sort of way of of of, uh, of looking at a company because we're encouraging you to do it more often rather than just at uh, origination and then potentially never again or just at a um, on an annual basis. So, and one of the most common questions we get asked about credit inquiries is, does that affect the risk score? And it doesn't because. For us, credit inquiries isn't an indication of whether you're dealing with them. It's a, an investigation piece. Um, that could be you be looking at a credit report and you're looking at the related entities. So we don't penalise those businesses um, just for being looked at. Yeah, fantastic point. Um, so this will give you the sort of trend that's occurring over the last 12 months. Um, you can see the industries that are looking at that particular entity as well. No surprise that construction is top of the pile there. The next bit we get into is, um, is risk data. So court actions, courts from around Australia providing um, court action information, default judgment, sometimes writs. The important things to look at here, when the action took place, who the plaintiff was, and ultimately the amount, right? You wanna know what they owed and when it took place, okay? So the most recent one there back in April, 7th of April, but then if you scroll down, you can see that they started to come in all the way back in 2019. Okay, so if you were monitoring, if you were dealing with this company, you would have started to receive email alerts showing court actions taking place, all right? Really, really important indicator that this company um, is not doing so well and, and, and potentially don't want to be dealing with them. Okay, the next one to look at, <coughs> payment defaults. These are registered by our customers. Um, again, looking at the added date, when the invoice was due, who it was submitted by, and of course the amount here. Um, so all the way back to November. So it's actually 12 months before the first, uh, sorry, almost 18 months before when it was added, May 2018, um, and then the, the first court action was, was November 2019. So a really, really much earlier warning that this company has started to head towards some sort of um, default administration territory, you know, and, and they've only just gone into administration. So, so really getting a three year head start to avoid that, um, that administration. So really powerful information there. Of course, if you're a credit watch user, you should be registering defaults. It's a great collection tool as well for you to utilize. ASIC published notices or insolvency notices. This is looking at anything to do with administration, uh, liquidation or wind up. Um, and what's really, really powerful here, particularly if you're a customer of Credit Watch, um, you're monitoring this particular entity, you receive an email alert and you can go, right, um, uh, an administrator has been appointed, I can actually jump in, be really proactive here and get in contact with the administrator or a, a liquidation order comes through, a winding up order. You can see who it is, you can, even get, you can email them, you can call them, you get all of those details. And then to go further in, you can actually see the details in this case, of the first meeting of creditors, um, where it's taking place, when it's taking place. Sometimes they even have um, virtual meeting, there you go, virtual meeting um, options as well if you can't get there in a, um, in a COVID or an interstate sort of way. So really, really great information there. Um, mercantile inquiries, of course, as I said, in this case, we don't have any debt collectors that had pursued this particular one, but if they had, you would see that a debt collector was chasing them. 
critical ASIC documents. So as we've got that live connection with ASIC, we can see every document that gets lodged. Now that could be a director change, it could be the, the annual um, solvency um, certification, anything that gets lodged on or by the company with ASIC, we're obviously getting access to and we can provide you. But importantly, what we then do is we will pull it out into its own section as well for the more critical ones. So this is looking at anything to do again with administration and winding up. I'm conscious of time here. We're already at um, uh, seven minutes past one, um, but we are, we are certainly on the home straight. GST and any sort of status changes will show up here. The next big part is obviously ASIC data, as I spoke about earlier. So showing important things like the, who the directors are, registered addresses, I'll come back to the directors, you know, where, where they are, um, shareholding details as well, who owns this company. In this case, it's a commercial company. So you could actually click on that particular company, jump through and have a look at the, the corporate shareholder. But I think the most important thing for us to look at is the directors. In this case, you can see the director, no bankruptcy at this stage. Um, however, he's moved to, to Israel and that was in the press actually quite recently. Um, and he has a history of other companies that have either failed or that he's involved in. So in this case, you can see that um, ASIC published notices registered against a number of other companies. Um, not a, not a, not a, a, a successful directorship, so to speak. So what we what we know is, if you're looking at a company, they've got a great um, they've got a great credit report, but then you see that they've got a history of failed and failing companies. It's a really important indicator, and I'll show you one very quickly, which is a which which paints a, a, a great um, another great example. Really easy to surf. Credit Watch, of course. Build and Developments is a, is a nice one to look at. Take a second to load here. Um, but we can go down to the ASIC section. A lot of data. You can see 149 current office holdings, 121 previous, and then a huge amount of adverse data that's showing. Okay. So you can see 65 company, adverse company statuses multiple court actions, payment faults, et cetera. You just, it's a really good way to understand how do they run their business? What's their corporate history, okay? And that information, of course, is filtering into the credit score and whatnot, but it's a good way to see it from a black and white perspective. So that's our Creditor Watch report with the credit score, the risk score in there and the payment predictor. Of course, there is a little bit more to get through, so I will jump back into um, uh, the slides. Financial risk assessment. Now this is an in-depth, uh, comprehensive look into a company's health, looking at their finances, either one, two or three years worth of finances. It's a, it's a, a more costly um, report to look at, but it's used for large credit limits, um, tenders or critical suppliers, okay? It will actually, I've got one prepared earlier for you. In this case, you can see this is, this is the report itself. Um, it's a PDF that comes to you. It takes anywhere from sort of um, 24 to 72 hours, depending on the, the level of information that you want in it. But you can see here, this is a 33, 32 page report with a huge amount of data. We can have, um, uh, we can have analysts and, and accountants add to it by looking into it, providing an actual um, interpretation of the financial. So one is to show all the financial data mapped out in um, the nice the, the nice credit report that you can see here. Now I'm not going to go through all 32. We get organisational structure. Um, let me get to the financials. Start to have a look at financial data. Look, go through it, go through it, go through it. There's examples online. Um, a huge amount of information, obviously, that we're pulling out of asset financials or collecting financials from the company itself, and then getting additional on top of that a tailored analysis of that particular. Um, entities financials themselves. So that is something that is available within Credit Report, uh, Creditor Watch to purchase on a one-off basis. And then of course, all the other, what we call additional searches and services. Land title is probably the most important thing. PPSR would be after that as well. And, and a range of KYC and AML um, reports. And the best way to access that, <clears throat> if you were looking at a credit report, 
you could add additional information into it um, by getting a comprehensive credit report, for example. Close that for just a sec. Um, sorry, just jump to the top. You then have all the other additional reports that you can access. So you can see here business name extract, KYC, AML, PEP, New Zealand, international. You can then look at bankruptcy information. You can do verification of identity. Um, you've got international here. And then, of course, if you just wanted to sort of scroll through all of the various ones that are available, um, you can certainly do that. So those are all 99 times out of 100 um, charged on a transactional basis. The majority of them are ultimately coming from a government entity, so they charge us um, and, and we provide it to you with a, with a small um, margin on top of that. Anything else to touch on there? No, you covered it up very well. Yeah, I think the only, the only one I'll sort of double down there was, was of course, uh, PPSR. If you click Generate Report, um, you can then add the PPSR component into it. Um, sorry. Property, there you go, so the, uh, the PPSR options to add in. And then within that as well, you've got the financial risk assessment, um, uh, various reports that you can access in there. So that will take you through exactly what you might need, um, depending on the size of the, the credit limit or the, the supplier, etc. API, Joe, touch on API. Yeah, I'm conscious of time. So quickly, like one of the best and, um, easiest ways to actually integrate um, and obtain our data is through API. Um, it's far more efficient. You remove any double handling or any manual mistakes that you might be able to. And the most uh, common integration that we do um, have with customers is through their ERP or their CRM system, whether it's Salesforce or NetSuite, um, even if it's just MYOB, you can use that, um, that information um, in our system, pull that um, and, and work that through um, uh, into your ERP and CRM, and that will help reduce any sort of uh, manual errors uh, that you might see um, across that um, uh, when you've got those people doing manual checks. And that can be automated as well. You know, for the yep. more tech savvy companies out there, um, you know, customer applies with you within your own application, or maybe you're using Applyzy. We can have that data push automatically into Salesforce, for example. Or you might want to run a check, um, a basic check within Salesforce before your sales team goes out and actually pursues that entity, rather get the yes or no before you even start. So a huge range of um, options there. And, and, and as Joe sort of mentioned, it's not just credit reports, is it basically everything you've seen today, including the alerts, including a number of those other reports can all be pulled in, um, in on an individual basis or, or, or all at once as well. Yeah. So con very, very, very conscious of time now. Um, I'm just going to jump in and have a look at a couple of questions. Um, will you be in good, this is a good question. Will you be incorporating data from the new payment times reporting scheme? Yes, we will be. Um, we've been working with uh, the small business on um, ombudsman um, and the, the government's actually obtained that data. Great. And the other question here, is there a one pager of what reports are available and prices, please? Uh, short answer is no, we don't charge on a per report basis. So we are a subscription um, uh, service. So you can jump onto the website and have a look at the, the online plans there for, for smaller businesses and, and you pay, uh, you know, say 40, 50 bucks a month, depending on, actually I can, I can just jump in and show you, it's probably a better way to do it. Um, you can jump, jump on there and, and have a look to see, you know what, I'll let you jump onto the website. We're running out of time. Um, the best way to do it is jump onto the website, have a look or get in contact with us and we can actually tell you um, and, and tailor a package depending on what your requirements are and also include what you actually need to include. Um, looks like the follow-up, uh, I meant the reports you were just showing me. Yep, that, those reports will be included in that subscription. So as part of your subscription, you get X number of reports plus the ability to monitor companies as well. Um, so thank you for those questions. We can maybe do a follow up with you um, asking those questions just to clarify. Um, as always, thanks for joining us. Please do get in contact with us if you would like. I want to run one last poll as well. If you'd like to be contacted, please let me know um, and, and we can obviously go from there. We have a number of uh, other webinars planned. We've got one 
PPSR, I believe it's on the 26th. Jump on uh, Creditor Watch to have a look at that. There's a webinar section that you can that you can look at, but we'll be sending out an email as well. Um, uh, I suggest you join that. That'll be myself. Um, we've got uh, uh, Gavin from from APSA, um, who's obviously the, the the government body that that, that regulates, controls, manages PPSR, and of course um, our PPSR experts in, um, in in the Ledland lawyers, and in particular Natalie Ledland joining us again, who's who's done a number with us before. So. Keep an eye out for that or jump on the website and have a look. Thank you um, for jumping into the poll there. And I hope you all uh, got something out of it. And we'll chat to you soon. Joe, thanks for joining me today. That was really Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks, everyone. See you later.